Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Red X podcast. My name is Haley Johnson. I'm so excited that you're here. Today, we have Juan Carlos with us. Welcome, Juan. Thanks, Haley. Thanks for having me. Yes, we're excited. You're a first time guest. So I'm excited to chat with you today, um, get into some systems, get into uh, how we can help agents build those systems. Um, but before we get into any conversation or anything, could you give us a little brief introduction, who you are and, and where you come from? Yeah, absolutely. I got started in the industry back in uh, 2016. Uh, prior to that, I was in college studying to become a, uh, a doctor. And I really did oh, wow. think I was going to uh, graduate and go to med school. Uh, but instead, I read that book called Rich Dad Poor Dad, had a complete uh, different change of scenery. And uh, from there, I said, you know what, instead of going to med school, let me go to real estate school. So I get my <laughs> license. And uh, from there, I basically hire a coach, uh, actually hired a couple of coaches. And I leveraged their wisdom and their knowledge to get to my goal way faster. By uh, 2018, I started building out my team. Uh, in 2020, I automate the entire team. I scale out of production. Uh, and then by 2022, my team did close to $100 million uh, worth of sales uh, in that single calendar year alone. Uh, and that was when I was like, you know what? Like I've kind of mastered this entire process of building relationships, nurturing them, staying in touch. What can I go out there to do to give back to the real estate community? Um, and that's when I started my entire training platform. So my whole goal now is to educate agents on the right way to build a business. And the right way for me is not just making money, uh, but making money in a way where you could actually enjoy it and you have time freedom and you have a lifestyle. Um, so that's what we do over here at Gold Bar. We're a uh, real estate training and coaching platform. Uh, we are membership based. Uh, so you sign up. It's a very low subscription cost. We give you tons of value up front. Uh, and we've been able to grow to 13,000 agents part of our platform. So uh, it's a pretty cool thing. Wow. And that sounds like it all happened really pretty quickly. That it's only seven years. It, it, I think seven years is quick, but in the yeah. hindsight of things, like back when I was 23 years old, I was like, oh, it's so far away. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so true. Um, but I think like agents get into the business. I mean, agents have been in the business for years and years and haven't been able to create systems that really like work for them and they're still working crazy hours and trying to please everybody yeah. and, and working really hard. And so the fact that you have figured it out and figured out how to make your business work for you um, in seven years, I think a lot of agents would love that. Right. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. so I'm excited to talk a little bit about how agents can kind of replicate your success. Um, but wow, like you wanted to be a doctor. That, that was kind of a 180. That's cool. Yeah, my, my, my mother was a dentist. I have a lot of family that are that are doctors also. And uh, I always love the idea of helping others. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's where the uh, desire came from that end. But uh, I also knew it wasn't the right path for me anyhow, uh, to mm -hmm. achieve financial freedom. So I think real estate is like the perfect combo of adding value and becoming financially free. I love that. Awesome. Well, then why don't we start with like where you think agents go wrong in the beginning of, of building systems and things like that. Like where, where do they struggle and what they need to implement just in the beginning when they're getting started and, and they have all these crazy things like crazy busy schedules and all of that stuff. Where would you say to begin? I would say that the main problem is they try to figure it out on their own. Um, anything mm -hmm. that you want to achieve in this business has already been done uh, by a successful agent. And a lot of the successful agents all the way at the top um, already have systems in place to nurture leads, stay in contact with them, add value, and go ahead and, and increase their conversion ratio to get more listings. So I think the whole big issue is everyone wants to go out of there and have a really cool CRM and have it set up so that it's automatically nurturing leads to you through email, text, voice. Um, you have a great way to capture leads to your opt-in page and you have everything interconnected. And these are all little tiny things that you have to do to go out there and like have like one system running for you. But the thing is they try to figure it out on your own. Uh, they go out of their way to just get a random CRM. They try to learn the CRM and then like three, four weeks in, they give up and then they just never go back to it. So it's almost like instead of making the system, the foundation, it's something they give a try to. And if they don't figure it out, they just skip it and then just go back to their entire business. Uh, and that's the equivalent of building a house on a very shaky foundation. So I tell everyone like the first six months in the business, uh, if you're a brand new agent, should be focused about you getting education on how to go out there and generate more mm -hmm. listings and building the right systems in place so that as you scale and as you start getting busier, like I said, it's harder to build systems once you have a 10,000 person database and you have all these people you haven't spoken to. But if you right. have two, three, four hundred people in your database and you can start setting up the, the right email campaigns and the follow-up campaigns and everything with retargeting and stuff like that, it's just a whole different process. So moral of the story, don't try to figure it out. Model someone else's system, model their success. And then if you could just go ahead and take that model and make it your own and make your little tiny tweaks, it just gets you to your goal way faster. 
And that's what you did, right? You said in the beginning, like you found a coach, like right off the bat. And so you replicated their success or their systems. I think a lot of people also, when, when they get a coach or just like, um, an agent that is well-known and that, and they try to replicate those, that success, I think sometimes they can focus on just the success that they're having. And they're like, oh man, this person looks so successful, so wealthy, all these things, but they didn't do what, um, they're not doing what the coach did in the beginning in order to set that up. Right. So they're like, yeah. Oh, but they have so much freedom. They have so much time, but you don't understand what that coach did in the beginning to, yeah. to really set that up. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the beginning. What, what people should do after they find a coach that they want to replicate. What are some like principles and common things they need to implement in their business to make sure that, that they can replicate that success? Really good. So I, I think finding a coach is changing nowadays. Number one, it's very important to find the coach that aligns with your core values. Uh, if yeah. someone's going to be going ahead and holding you accountable or someone's going to be training you, it's important that someone aligns in the way that you do business uh, in terms of what they're teaching you. So if you're someone that is all about building relationships and you're not transactional, you want to make sure that you're not dealing with a coach that only cares about closing their next deal. Um, and there's a lot of people in this industry that make a ton of money, but really they just see every single client or every single customer as a dollar figure. So that number one is kind of like the main mm -hmm. thing when going out there and saying, does my energy really align with this person that's going to be meeting with me and mentoring me every single week? So that's number one. Number mm -hmm. two, it's not about becoming that coach. You don't have to become this person in terms of like their mini me or just replicating their entire business. It's about finding the one part of their business that really you admire, whether it's their marketing system, whether it's their lead generation system, whether it's their branding and content creation system, whether it's their operation system. There's so many coaches that I've had where I've seen one part of their business and I'm like, whoa, I want that. And I've hired them to literally just teach me or help me build the entire same thing into my business. So for me, it's like, hey, I'm seeing the way that someone's doing their entire business. But I, like I said, I may not like the way that they're going out there and generating leads. So I just find that little tiny niche and I'm like, you know what? Teach me how to do this. And then I'm going to apply this from you. And then I'm going to hire another coach to do something on this side. And then I'm going to hire another coach to do something from here. So that would be kind of my two okay. recommendations. It's what are you personally lacking within your business? For some people, they're not posting on social media consistently. They're not creating content. They're not finding any useful strategy. But when it comes to YouTube and the internet, when it comes to going out there and generating more leads from that, who is crushing it at content? Who's crushing it at going out there and creating three, four, five pieces a week? How are they creating reels? What are the software they're using to do this? Who's the editing team behind it? Go out there, hire them as a coach, pay them, and then implement their system. And now from there, it's like, okay, cool. I have a really cool content creation system. Who has the best website in the industry? Go out there, implement that system and do it that way. So I think if you do it that way, you could really become a unique, like own individual brand and run the business the way that you want it versus just becoming like a copy and paste model of right. whoever is it is that you follow. Hmm. I like that because, I mean, you might like somebody else's marketing strategy, um, but you might not like how they decide to prospect or specific like lead types that they like to talk to or whatever. And so you want to talk to somebody who is more about nurturing your database or something like yeah. that. Right. And so I, I like that you can kind of pick and choose and create your own. Um, because I think, yeah, you're right. One size does not fit all. And I think there's so many great people in the industry to just stick to one. I think can limit you and also doesn't serve you in, in your specific talents and your specific, yeah. um, strengths. So I really like that. And, and I like that you said, um, I think like when you niche down and, and you're not, you're not going to get too overwhelmed. I think also with an entirely new system with everything new, I think if you just focus on one aspect, especially yeah. when you're new, right, you focus on one thing, you look at one thing and then you master it and then you can move on to the next one. Um, mm -hmm. so I like that. What, what like, cause I know you have a system that, that you followed and, and is that what you did? You just took and you chose from, from different coaches and, and created your own. So in, in the beginning, I kind of modeled uh, the coach's business, like step for step, whatever they were doing, I would just go ahead and implement this in my business. And I found out very early on, I'm like, like it, it works and like I'm, I'm doing it their way, but I just mm -hmm. don't like it. I think I could do it better or I just don't enjoy the way that they've been doing it for the last 20 years. So that's mm -hmm. when I started going out there and hiring consultants and other people that were like, you know what? We're the best at what we do when it comes to sales. So I paid someone literally like I think it was $18,000 to help me build my entire operation when it comes to sales. 
Um, and sales is very simple. It's going out there, generating leads. You have a setter, you have a closer, you have someone that's actually going out there and like generating the listing or the buyer, whatever it may be. And then if you could really automate that entire process, you could get buyers and listings on demand. And that's through outbound sales and someone just going out there and hitting the phones. Um, then I found someone that was crushing it when it came to content creation and marketing. Um, they were literally pumping out like 15, 20 reels a week. And I was like, who has enough time to do all this? And they're like, no, we have an entire system with software called ClickUp and, and assistants in the Philippines that are doing everything when it comes to the editing. And then when we go ahead and synchronize it with Zapier, this entire thing is like machine and we could just pump things out with just one hour a week of recording. And I'm like, tell me more. So I paid them another, I think $9,000 to teach me step for step how to do that entire thing. Um, and then like literally as of recently, just got another check for $10,000. And that person has one of the best operational systems that I've seen when it comes to just uh, retargeting ads, campaigns, and just following up with people once they hit into your actual like CRM. So I'm always constantly like revamping my systems. I'm always uh, putting education first when it comes to knowing like, what can I do to go out there and improve my business? Um, and like I said, these aren't things that it's like, Hey, once you build a system, you set it and forget it. Like the content strategy when it came to Instagram and Facebook seven, eight years ago, like mm. it's completely different. Like that right. changes every six months. So you have to be revamping your systems over and over again. But the good news is there's only three pillars. There's sales, there's marketing operations within real estate anyhow. And if you could just get really good systems for those three things in place, you could hire staff, have someone manage it on that side. And then you're pretty much as removed from the business as you could be. But if you enjoy sales and you want to be the first that runs sales, you stick to sales and you build some really good tips for marketing and ops. And then vice versa, if you're the marketing uh, king or queen and you want to go out there and just focus on running ads and generating leads all day, you could build a really cool badass sales team and operations team and just have them service everything on that side. So I think it's finding out like what is it that you enjoy in the business? Because I haven't found anyone that loves everything, right? <laughs> anything operational or administrative. I love sales. So for me, it's I have one of the best badass marketing teams. They go out there, they generate the leads. Me and my sales team go ahead and actually close them. And then I have an operations team that kind of takes care of the rest. Mm. I like it. And in your pillars, I, I was actually going to ask like what, what pillars you, you focus on. Um, so then, because you're talking about expanding your team, right? Building a team where if I'm a single agent and I'm, I'm learning different things and I'm kind of learning what I like and what I don't like and things like that, how do you know when to expand? Where do you expand first? And like, yeah, like, let's start there. So I just came off of a conference that I, uh, I started uh, called Gold Bar Live. And at that conference, we had close to a thousand people in New York City. Um, and I literally had the most successful agents in the country uh, at, at that conference that I was personally interviewing. And I would notice that I would about the majority of those agents, like once they reach past a billion dollars a year in annual volume, um, they're actually like, they do expand, but they focus very heavily on one or two major markets. So there's this big connotation that you have to expand, expand and go into different markets, different territories, different regions after a certain amount of volume. But the reality is the number one agent at this brokers, I was speaking there, she does close to 700 to $900 million a year in volume. And she hasn't left like a small radius in, uh, in what do you call it, her city? Like she's just mm -hmm. the queen of selling 10, 15, 20, $30 million waterfront homes. So this whole idea that you have to get to a certain point and then expand to another area or get to a certain point and then hire someone, it's all different in everyone's situation. What I would say is that for the average agent, once you get to that point where you're making 150, maybe $250,000 a year, it becomes very hard for you to do the business. Uh, without working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. Uh, for right. me, it was around the $250,000 mark where I realized my phone was ringing off the hook 24 seven. I have no life. I have no like boundaries. Like something's got to change. And then from there, I hired an assistant, which is an operational system. Uh, and then from there, I got 20, 30 hours of my week back. And then I was able to go ahead, take a step back. And then I got to 400K a year in GCI. And from there, I hired mm -hmm. someone else on the marketing side. So I think things are changing when it comes to teams. Um, teams are no longer just going to be, Hey, go out there and hire buyer agents to go out there and serve you with this whole NAR settlement. I think that's going to throw a wrench in a lot of team models. Um, right. I also don't believe in teams that are paying agents in terms of splits and, and compensation. Uh, and the only reason I don't believe in it is because I did it and it completely backfired on me. Um, mm -hmm. when I was at my peak, we were doing close to hundred million dollars a year in volume. And the year after, when you have such a great year, a lot of the agents come to you and say, Hey, I don't want to be on a 50, 50 split anymore. And you can't even like renegotiate that. Like you could offer them like a little bit more. But the second that you're operating your team at a certain margin and you're making 10, 15, 20%, if you give them an extra 10 or 15%, your profit disappears. So mm -hmm. there's this big issue in real estate with teams where a lot of teams are actually recruiting so many team members, but these agents are literally leaving within six, 12, 18 months 
Because once you teach an agent how to go out there and do everything on their own, which is generate leads, nurture them, convert them, and service them, well, what do they out there and do? They, they want to go out there and start their own teams. And you can't knock mm. the hustle. Like, I did it. We all do it. Like, we are all diehard entrepreneurs. So I really yeah. do think the new form of starting a team is building staff and systems behind you. Um, and that could be as simple as three hires, a sales manager, which you could be on salary. And I go over this in my training platform, my coaching, how to hire salespeople on salary so that you're not giving them 50% of the revenue that comes to the house. A marketing manager, which can handle everything that has to do with your lead generation, your ads, your content, all of that stuff. And then an administrative manager. And with three managers on a fixed salary, and maybe you give them a little percentage of profit bonus, you could run a million dollar a year business at 70% margins. Uh, like I'm pretty confident in that. So that's the whole thing. Like I, I, I think starting a team is all relative based on how much you're willing to work in order for the desired compensation you're getting for. And once you hit that desired compensation of 250, 300, 400, are you okay working those hours? Because some people are cool working weekends and 40, 50 hours a week, that's fine. But if you wanna be making half a million dollars a year working relatively little, five, 10, 15 hours a week, it's necessary to go out there and implement leverage. Nearly 90% of real estate agents say that social media should be a major part of their business strategy, but only 25% are satisfied with the results they get. Social media advertising has become a must have lead generation tool for every modern business. As a real estate agent, social media ads can help you inform, engage, and impress your leads before you even meet them. Which is why I want to tell you about a tool that can help your paid ad strategy get you motivated and transaction ready leads for a lot less money and headache. With Red X's tool Ad Builder, you can send targeted ads to homeowners most likely to sell in the next three to 12 months which means you aren't wasting money advertising to people who aren't going to do business with you in the near future. Ad Builder also simplifies the ad creation process, giving you the ability to easily monitor and maximize your ad performance. Imagine calling leads who already know your name, face, and brand. Using Ad Builder to run your social media ads lets your leads see your face before you call them, turning a cold lead into a warm opportunity. For just $49.99 a month, you can revolutionize the way you reach out to potential clients. Go to redx.com to learn more. I haven't I haven't heard this before, so this is this is exciting for me um, about how to build teams and and in kind of a newer way and like thinking about it in a different way. Um, Cause it sounds like when you first, when you got what you said, like 250 K, whatever you kind of hired to the pain, you were like, Oh, I, I don't have time a, a, to do everything. So I'm going to hire yeah. somebody to help me with this. Um, and, and I think that's probably what a lot of people do is like, Oh, they have the pain or, or maybe yeah. some people do it prematurely or, and then, and then they end up, you know, in a, in a tough situation. But I like this, how you build, cause we talked about building systems and then you build people to your system or you um, hire people to your systems. Yeah. So I, I like that a lot. And I like, um, especially if you already know like how you want to market and, and, and you figure it out and you do it yourself, then it's pretty easy to hire somebody, tell them that system. And then, and then now that's off your plate and you don't have to do it, especially if you don't like marketing or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. So that's cool. I like that. Um, and I also, this was kind of a while ago, but when you talked about, um, revamping your systems also um and how how things always change when you have people on your team um are they in charge of like making sure that you revamp your systems or or are you kind of running that or talk to me about that a little bit really good question so my chief marketing officer who runs everything when it comes to uh, marketing ads content creation video edits all of that stuff uh, not only is he smarter uh, than me when it comes to the entire niche but i pay for his education uh, so literally oh. like just bought him a course that was worth $2,500 from a marketing expert that's making a million dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And I was like, listen, if, if he's making that much money and you can just learn 10 or 20% of what you're doing, it's just going to elevate your game that much more. So I reinvest into my people by hiring consultants, coaches, and, and courses for them to consume. And that just makes them even better at what they do. So mm -hmm. you have to see your business as like a true foundational pyramid where if, like I said, you have your marketing person here, your ops person here and your sales team here, if your ops person can't service clients correctly, or they're not good at transaction management, it's going to make these two look bad. And then that entire pyramid is going to collapse or a table or whatever you want to call it. So that's why it's so, it's so important to reinvest back into the people that you hire. And yes, they should be staying on top of like any improvements or market trends or stuff like that. Like 
I wasn't aware that, like I said, Instagram changed the whole real content thing from one thing to another. And like, he tells me all of this. So yeah. that's why it's good to have people that are kind of like, they have a pulse on things. Whereas you're more on the leadership perspective on hiring, stuff like that. I like that. You, you invest in your people so that then they can help, help your business grow. I like that. Um, so I'm thinking about, cause, cause we were talking about, um, our audience pre-show about how there's a lot of single agents that, that listen to our podcast. Um, and a lot of people, cause they have red X, right? So they're grinding, they're calling, they're prospecting, they're calling yeah. expired leads for sale by owner leads, all that stuff. Um, and I'm just thinking I'm putting my shoes in that person's, that agent's spot. And, and we're talking about team building and all of this stuff when a lot yeah. of agents are just like, where's my next listing coming from? Right. Um, and so how can that, that mindset, that agent who is there trying to just make the next deal, how can they expand their mindset a little bit to, to be able to break into the stuff that we're talking about really like grow and leverage and, and systems and all of that stuff, because maybe they get stuck and, and, yeah. or they just don't have the right systems or they, um, cause we talked about, you know, how agents try to do it on their own and, and maybe that's a pitfall, but, but let's talk yeah. to those agents who, who are like, Oh, there's no way I could do this. There's that's, that's way yeah. too far in advance. I, I don't even make enough money to do that. So I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. Systems, uh, shouldn't cost you money. If anything, they should actually save you money if implemented correctly. Um, hmm. the reason a lot of agents don't implement systems, in my opinion, is either lack of knowledge, like they have no idea how, or it's very intimidating to them. Um, and I think with the right support team or the right community, like that could be taken care of very easily. Um, yeah. I don't mean to plug in gold bar, but we go ahead yeah. and have an entire training module on Red X on how to export the data when we go to circle prospecting. And then we teach agents how to reach out to these people through, uh, phone calls, through handwritten notes, whatever it may be. And when you see another six, seven, 800 agents doing the same exact thing, and they're all posting their progress within gold bar, just got a listing, just got a listing, got a response back, got three calls, three listing appointments set up. Like it also motivates you and makes you become aware. Wow. Like this stuff actually works. So number one, it's getting the knowledge. Like what is my CRM? What does it do? And how am I using it correctly? And I think everyone uses their CRM, like an Excel sheet. They just load the thing up. They have a bunch <laughs> of people in there, but then they never hear back from you. That's not a CRM. That's called a filing folder, you know, or that's called a sticky note box. But in reality, a CRM is used to manage relationships with your customers or with your clients. And when it comes to management, it should be something that you're opening up every single day. And if you could take things a step further, set up automations or workflows, which is just fancy for like automatic things that go off uh, that actually nurture and stay in touch with that. So the bare minimum, this is like, like literally the least you could do is just send out a monthly email to everyone in your entire database. Um, and if you want to take it a step further, you can set up weekly automated email campaigns that go out to every single person that's added. Uh, you want to take things step a step further. You could go ahead and start reaching out to people on major holidays through email, uh, and you can even start calling that, like actually like getting in touch with that. Um, I just got off the call with an agent. He had 2,000 people in his contacts. Of those 2,000, about 1,061 or something, like never heard back from him over the last year. And he's literally going out of his way to cold call brand new people in the neighborhood. And I'm like, why are you calling strangers? These people haven't heard from you in about a year. And literally, like, you know, they're people that want to buy or sell in the future. At least 10 of them are going to transact this year. Why not spend the next 90 days reactivating that entire database? And he's like, it's genius. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's not genius. It's common sense. So yeah. that's the whole thing. It's, it's like your database is your baby and you have to nurture that baby and feed that baby and take care of that baby or that baby's going to grow old and, and and leave you and be like, you neglected me. I never want to go ahead and, and, and send you referrals. Uh, and that's the whole thing. It's, it's mm -hmm. like, we work so hard to build these relationships up front, but we completely forget about them as soon as they go into the CRM. And that's where systems come in play. If you forget about them, it's okay. Cause you have an entire little machine that's doing all this stuff for you. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's common, especially with our customers, because um, people are calling like transaction ready people, like people that their home expired, right? And they need to relist. So you're calling them and then and then you relist their home and then you never talk to them again. So it, it, you put so much effort into building your database that that you're right. It's so important to nurture that and to to make sure that you're you're constantly um, uh, reaching out to them in <coughs> a time effective way. Right. So you're not, you're not writing all yeah. these emails every single day, shooting them out. Um, use systems to leverage. I like how you said that systems shouldn't cost you money. Um, and that rings home true for Red X customers, I think too, because they're like, 
I mean, you buy expired leads for $59.99 and they're and people are like, oh, I just can't, I can't pay for that. But if you get one deal from all of the leads that you get from that, it, it pays for itself, right? No. So you kind of got to think think that way. Um, so I like that. And and I think also um just just about building your database and 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 implementing those systems. What else can agents do to make sure I think I mean, I I hear all the time, I mean, you do as well. Agents are always like, oh, my neighbor uh, didn't know I was an agent and they listed with somebody else or, um, you know, and and I think, you know, reaching out uh, fixes that. But what else uh, other than that, can we talk to agents? We're running out of time here um, to build those systems, anything else that we're missing so that they can actually start growing and, and really achieve their goals. I, I think it goes back to just modeling someone else's systems. Like any single time someone joins Gold Bar, I give them the exact affiliate for the CRM that I use, but I give them the snapshot so that they have a copy and paste version of my identical CRM with all my email campaigns, my text campaigns, my landing page, my opt-in pages, all of these things. So when it comes to systems, like let's really just break it down. Yeah. It comes in two forms. There's software and then there's staff. When it comes to software, that's probably the main thing people should tackle. It's how do I get my calendar hooked up to my Gmail, hooked up to my CRM, hooked up to my landing page. And then any single time someone reaches out to me or opts in, they're going to hear from me for the rest of their life until they want to go ahead and send me a referral. And if you go ahead and you do this entire thing correctly, technically they can find you on their website. They can click on your Instagram link, whatever it may be. You go ahead, you get their email name, phone number and information. And then from there, automatic emails start pouring out. If this is done correctly, essentially at some point, they're going to want to book a meeting. They go on your website because they remember who you are because you've been staying in touch with them. They book a meeting with you and boom, now you have a sales call. If the mm-hmm. only focus you get is generating more sales calls using the strategy, you're going to be in a good place because the number one measure for success is more listing presentations. It's going on more consultations and sales calls essentially become the lifeblood for you getting more listings. So uh, I would say it starts with like I said, just modeling someone's thing. Uh, we give this out to everyone for free. As soon as they sign up for Gold Bar, like this is like the main thing that we go ahead and push them so that they're not figuring out what to do or running like chickens with their heads cut off. And then from there, we have staff. Staff comes into play at a later period. Usually once that agent is making 100, 150, 250K a year, if you have the right software in place, you're actually gonna get a lot busier because now you have people hearing from you a lot more often. And now the issue is, well, you're doing everything. So it, all it takes is a little bit of leverage. Um, I think I like your strategy, which is whatever pain point you have that you really don't like doing, outsource and hire for that first. And then once it gets to a point where, like I said, you're working 20 hours a week, you're making the money, money you're making, you may want to just leave it that way. Like, unless you have this desire to scale and grow, like if you're happy and you have the right lifestyle and you have the right income, treat your business the way you want to treat it. But if you're someone like me that wants to continue scaling and improving and things like that, then you do want to hire someone that's smarter in that specific role for your business. Get it to the point where you have someone on the sales side, marketing side, and ops side, and then remove yourself entirely so you can just focus on the on the bigger uh, picture of things. Mm, I love it. I think a nice theme here for the podcast today is just really <laughs> leverage, like leverage other people, leverage tools, leverage systems, um, and and that is how to be successful. I love it. Juan, where can people find more about you if they would like? Yeah, absolutely. They could go on Instagram at Juan, J-U-A-N, gold bar. Um, and if they want to tune into our training and uh, coaching platform, they could go to joingoldbar.com. Uh, we have a uh, sneak peek little access. So if people want to create a free account and just kind of take a look at everything, we're offering that out now for free. Uh, we will be changing it to paid very soon, but uh, you can go ahead and create an account, uh, get access to the entire network referrals, all of that stuff. Uh, but what's really cool about what we're doing is we're doing monthly listing challenges where we're all aligned, rowing in the same direction on how to generate and convert more listings. And with everything happening with this NAR settlement and buyer commission and all that stuff, I don't think it's no it's like it's no longer an option to become a listing specialist. I think it's going to become a necessity for you to go out there and do that. Um, and that's our focus at Gold Bar. It's, it's helping agents get more listings, uh, break into higher price listings, which is luxury, and then essentially uh, implementing more leverage. Uh, so the three L's. Um, that's pretty much it. Join Goldbar.com at Juan Goldbar on Instagram, um, and I'm pretty accessible. So people just reach out. Awesome. Amazing. We'll have all of those links below for anybody that wants those. Thank you so much, Juan, for taking the time to come and talk to our audience today. I loved our conversation, loved being able to talk about systems and how to help agents be successful. So thank you so much. Thanks everybody for watching as well. Of course, if you want any resources or anything, if you want to sign up for RedX and save money on the setup fee, go to redx.com slash podcast um, and everything will be there. Thanks again. And we will see everybody next time.